pug wash time. Only it's not all aboard the Skylark, it's all aboard the Rossier Tern. Because just out there, a mile out to sea, is Coquit Island, the UK stronghold for this species. And I've got to say, I don't think I've seen one for three or four years. So I'm quite excited about this. Can you see the little pitch building just to the left of the lighthouse? Yes. To the left of that is a little hide. Yeah. To the left of that is a jetty with a hide on it. Oh, right, okay. In the hide. Okay. Well, oh, it's an unexpected tree, I have to say. Sun's shining with a salty Enjoy. spray in the air. Coca's got a sort of microclimate, you see, so it's got, yeah, well, but it normally when, when anyone says something's got a microclimate, it means it's damp. Yeah, well, this is different. Don't worry, I don't do this on the M25 when I'm driving. Well, not unless it's something really special. Uh, just, just to describe what, what you're seeing over there. In front of the engine house, you can see some what look like dry stone walls. Yeah. They're actually terracing. Yeah. And on the terracing, we've got 300 nest boxes for those returns. How long have these nest boxes been in use then? Uh, it was in the year 2000, I, had a, I was lucky enough to have a trip to Rockabill in Southern Ireland. Yeah. And I saw the nest boxes and the take up. So I brought the idea back here, got the okay from RSPB, Natural England, to trial 25 nest boxes. And that year, all the rosy terns that we had on the island, which were 24, it increased to 34 pairs, and all of them are trying to get nesting nest boxes. Really? So every year on year since then. And prior to that, what have they been doing? Nesting in the open? In open, open spaces, uh, in, in underneath the nettle beds, 115 pairs of rosy terns. This year? I spotted the 115th yesterday. Yeah. We were doing a count, and I thought, oh, brand new one. So that is a record for COVID. When I started, 34 years ago, there were 18 pairs. And the assumption was, Pocket Island was just going to go the same way the rest of the country, yeah. but we've just got the right combination of no disturbance, they've obviously got good feeding, they've got the right habitat, even the terraces that we provide for them we put shingle down because we now know that they, they very carefully select the tiny fragments of shell and throw them in the nest box. We've got a live cam in one of the nest boxes, you can see the pa both parents carefully selecting and, and arranging their, their scrape with shell fragments, so every spring we spread new, new shell fragments out for them. So they've got the terrace, they've got their own little colony, yeah. they've got their nest boxes, yeah. they rock on the top, yeah. so they can guard the little micro terrace. You know, you know what I call that? That's conservation micromanagement in extreme, isn't it? It is a bit. It is, but, but it works. But it works. But Coconut Island's stopping uh, the rosier tern being extinct in the UK. So. Okay, but why is it under such threat? Why, why have the numbers de declined so you know, dramatically? It's still not known. Uh, they're a very timid bird, we know that. It could be something to do with the feeding because uh, they, they prefer um, sand eels. And what about elsewhere in Europe? A similar declines? It's a similar decline, yeah. It's globally threatened species. So it's Britain's rarest nesting seabird. And so in terms of egg thievery, are there still enough egg collectors out there to warrant, you know, wanting Rosier terns? Sadly, eggs? yes. There yeah. are. It's so serious, the police have what they call operational orders, which is usually uh, instructions they have for within the police for dealing with serious crime, but we've got one for wildlife crime, for disturbing rosy terns or egg, egg, uh, for stealing eggs. And effectively, it's a short circuit. If we have an issue, we can phone the right people at the right time, rather than the switchboard. The switchboard and the police now are, are run by yeah. staff that may not know wildlife crime, so we're keyed in to the right people to respond immediately. I was under the impression that you know egg collecting had pretty much died out, though, Paul. No, we had a guy uh, lived locally, and they found 900 birds' eggs in his collection in Amble. In Amble, 900. And had, he had little tern, blackbird, robin, but no rosier tern. And the police knew from intelligence they had that uh, he was after a rosier tern on COVID. They confiscated a, a computer from somebody in, in, uh, in the Midlands and on the footage was a boat watching and timing the wardens. And the warden looked across and you can see the warden put it and he said, look out, the warden's here, dipping down. We know we're being watched because they're trying to that, see... That was here? That was here, okay. yeah. yeah. so we know we're being watched, observed, and we know that given the chance they'll get on. So we never ever leave the island unattended. And we never tell people just how many birds, uh, how many staff we've got guarding them so they can't work out if it's safe to try and attempt the landing. Yeah. It's, it's quite incredible. Both horrifies and surprises me. I, I was well, under the impression that we, were, that we were down to a handful of miscreants now when it no, came to egg there's collecting a, there's, there's and a, that the threat had all but disappeared. No, there's a hierarchy still active that still wants. Crazy, absolutely crazy.
What about that? Rociate turn on Coquette Island. Absolutely fantastic. Across the BioBlitz, we've been looking at conservation in different terms. Sometimes in urban situations, just a handful of individuals, other times at the landscape scale. Here, it's about one species in some ways, that Rociate tern, but of course by conserving that, you're conserving the entire island where lots of other things are flourishing. And I've got to say, it's down to the hard work, effort, imagination and endeavour of the conservationist here. They've done a fantastic job because this is the UK stronghold and it's been a top morning. It's just that, I mean, no one put any biscuits in the boat. I mean, I hate to complain, I want to see eight turn and everything, but starving. I like could murder a ginger snack or some sort of lemonade cookie at this point. You know, even a Garibaldi. Even a Garibaldi.